What's going on everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder where we talk all things Marvel, all things MCU, and Spider-Man. No way home when we got the official full length trailer. Did not disappoint. I actually didn't want to see Toby or Andrew in the official trailer. I want to see them for the first time on screen, you know, despite all the leaks that we've had. But I think this trailer was perfect. It showed so much and there's a lot to break down. Now, I've only watched it a few times. I'm going to watch it a few more times as I go through and look at the footage and break it down. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos about this trailer throughout the week. So be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos and so you can enter our Spider-Man collectible giveaway. Me and Chris over at Cosmic Culture are giving away one. All you got to do to enter is subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Chris's channel, Cosmic Culture, and leave some comments on some recent videos. All right, there's a lot to break down in this trailer, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to mention and talk about is no, Toby and Andrew were not in this trailer, but I am happy that that is the case. However, there are very clear signs in this footage that this trailer has been edited. And to me, I actually think we found the scene where Toby and Andrew are in, and you can see that one of the other two Spider-Men is actually hitting Lizard in one of the scenes. Let me show you. In the scene towards the end of the trailer where our Peter Parker, our Spider-Man, is fighting against the villains, we only see one Spider-Man, and we see all of the villains, or at least most of them, jump towards Peter. We have Electro, the Sandman, and the Lizard attacking Peter, but if you look at the scene right here, when the Lizard is jumping in the middle of the air, he randomly gets hit. The only problem here with this scene is that nothing hits him, nothing at all. He kind of just throws his head to the side, but it is very clear that he is getting hit. And if I end up stuttering a lot in this breakdown, sorry, I'm just really excited about the trailer still. But again, it's very clear that the lizard is getting hit by something. So what I think is probably happening here is that the three Spider-Men are going up against these three villains with each Spider-Man fighting one specific villain. Now they are obviously not going to show us the other two Spider-Men. That is what they've been trying to avoid doing for a very long time. But I'm willing to bet that that is exactly what is happening here because it's very clear something, or should I say someone, is hitting the lizard and I'm betting it's another Spider-Man. Also, another very important part of this trailer is that Dr. Otto Octavius, Doc Ock, acknowledges that our Peter Parker is not the same Peter Parker as his. Therefore, Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker is technically acknowledged here. Parker. To acknowledge that Tom Holland is not the same Peter Parker from his universe is to acknowledge that Tobey Maguire is the Peter Parker from his universe. So little hints like these, little small details tell us that Tobey and Andrew are coming. And then let's talk about the very final scene with Doctor Strange. We see a lot of mystical stuff going on and it kind of looks like the multiverse is shattering. Doctor Strange says, they're starting to come through and I can't stop them. Now, right away, what I believe is happening here is that the villains are actually trying to bring more villains from different universes into this universe. More on that in a bit, but what this tells me is that Peter Parker and Doctor Strange cannot do this alone. Doctor Strange literally says, I can't stop them. Then Peter Parker himself, our Tom Holland Peter Parker, even says, this is all my fault. I can't save everyone. Again, implying that Peter is going to need some help in which he will get in the form of two other Spider-Men. And I think that this could perhaps be the time where the other two Spider-Men do get brought into this universe. Doctor Strange can't stop other people from coming in. Why would it only be bad guys? Perhaps the good guys would come as well. And I think that is what's going to happen in this scene, if not earlier in the movie. So yes, I firmly do believe that Toby and Andrew are 100% in this movie. I think they've been edited out of some scenes in this trailer, but let's get started on some other really important scenes. Now the first scene is Peter talking to MJ and he actually mentions getting bit by the spider, something that we really haven't heard much of in the MCU. They skipped the whole origin story when they introduced Peter in Captain America Civil War and then in his own film Homecoming. And he tells MJ there's only one week that he's ever felt normal, where his life has felt normal. And he says that week was the week that MJ found out that he was Spider-Man. Now of course it looks like our Peter Parker 
Walker got to work right away when he got these powers, doing good like he talked about in Captain America Civil War, taking on the responsibility. But what I think they could be doing here is foreshadowing. This scene is made to imply that MJ is kind of the best thing in his life, with the exception of maybe Aunt May. But she's the one that makes everything better. Now I hope this isn't the case, but it could be foreshadowing perhaps her death or maybe her forgetting that Peter is Spider-Man at the very end, or maybe even forgetting that she knows him. Again, I hope not, but a little bit of foreshadowing here. Then it shows us some web slinging footage, which we haven't got a ton of in the cityscape so far with the Spider-Man Homecoming franchise, but here he has MJ and they're going through the subway tunnels. So this is literally picking up right where Spider-Man Far From Home left off in that post credit scene where he's with MJ, everybody knows that he's Spider-Man, he's going to pick her up and they're going to run. Now here's where we really find out about the main plot. We know from the last trailer that Peter Parker goes to Doctor Strange to get him to do a spell to make everybody forget that he is Spider-Man. And we know that Peter Parker opened his mouth one too many times while Doctor Strange was doing the spell. Also, Wong mentioned that the spell was pretty dangerous and he warned Strange to not do that spell, but of course they did it anyways and it got messed up. And now, Doctor Strange tells us exactly what happened. He says, when you botched that spell, implying that Peter is the one that indeed messed it up, where you wanted everyone to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, we started getting some visitors. Now, if you've been following my channel or if you've been trying to keep up to date with Spider-Man No Way Home, you know that these other visitors, Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Electro, the Sandman, and the Lizard are from other universes, and Doctor Strange confirms that here. He actually says we're getting visitors from every universe. Now, we do know where the villains are coming from. From what we know, Doc Ock and Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin are indeed from the Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire universe. It is rumored that Sandman is from the same universe as well, obviously coming from Spider-Man 3. Then the Lizard and Electro are from the Amazing Spider-Man universe, with Andrew Garfield. Again, all of the villains are coming from Toby and Andrew's universe, so of course it would make sense that they would come from their universes as well and be in this main universe to help our Peter Parker, whether or not they came by choice or not. Now, as Doctor Strange mentions some visitors coming, we get several clips of villains. We see the pumpkin bombs that we saw from the last trailer, but this time we actually get a full reveal of the Green Goblin. Again, this will be Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin from the Spider-Man Tobey Maguire universe. We see his pumpkin bomb then we see him come through the smoke, full outfit, even the helmet on his glider. And if you look closely, you can see that this is the exact same suit that Willem Dafoe wore in Spider-Man 1. Then we don't get a shot of Electro per se that comes later on in the trailer, Jamie Foxx, but we do get his lightning. He's shooting lightning at Peter and we get a really good look at Peter Parker's new black and gold suit. Now, fun fact about this black and gold suit, I actually exclusively reported where the black suit actually comes from on my website, thecosmicwonder.com. I also posted it on my Instagram and Twitter, so if you're not following me on there, you should. Sometimes I post things that I don't put in videos. And based off of what I've learned, the black and gold suit is simply his red and black gold suit turned inside out. During the beginning of Spider-Man No Way Home, a person who supports Mysterio will run up to Peter Parker as Spider-Man in the street and throw green paint on him because he supports Mysterio. This causes Peter to flip his suit inside out, and inside out all the circuitry shows for the suit, which is why it has the gold circuitry in it. This is much like what happened in Spider-Man Homecoming. In Homecoming, we saw Peter Parker's Tony Stark suit inside out, and if you look closely, you can see the golden circuitry and the black. That is what we are seeing here with the Spider-Man black and gold suit. Then we get new footage of Doc Ock fighting Spider-Man on the infamous bridge, but we actually get the fight scene. Doc Ock shows up and says hello Peter, but after unmasking him and getting a close up look, he realizes this is not Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker. He is in a different universe and there is a different Peter Parker, Tom Holland's Peter Parker, and he says to him, you're not Peter Parker. I lost my mind in this scene. Like I mentioned before, his Peter Parker is Tobey Maguire, and him and the film are acknowledging that right here in this scene. To me, this is a huge confirmation that Tobey is indeed coming. 
Now, the next part is very, very important. After they fight on the bridge, we cut to a scene where Doc Ock is in a prison in Doctor Strange's sanctum. This is actually the same location where Doctor Strange would do the spell. And there's been leaked concept art out there that shows all of the villains actually being trapped inside of the cell. They each get their own individual cells. And of course, they're making sure to truly introduce Doc Ock here. Peter, MJ, and Ned ask what his name is. He says, Dr. Otto Octavius, in which they all laugh. And this really reminds me of the scene in Infinity War where Peter is saying, oh, we're using our made up names. Now from here, several really important key events happen. Doctor Strange says there are others out there, other villains, but I'm also thinking he could be referring to other Spider-Men as well. But when he says others, they do show the villains. We get a look at a new Statue of Liberty being built to hold a Captain America shield. Some leaks have told us that this is where the final fight will take place. And later on in the trailer, it does show Spider-Man. Spider-Man fighting Electro, Sandman, and the Lizard on top of it. So Strange says there are others out there and we need to send them back and we get a look at Electro in the background behind Spider-Man in his black and gold suit, which is now enchanted by magic as you can see in his right arm, Doctor Strange has enchanted the suit. Obviously he does this to help Peter Parker be able to fight all of these different villains since there are so many. He also probably granted the suit some powers to be able to trap them. Now here we get a brief scene of what Doctor Strange is kind of like as a mentor. He says it's all Peter's fart and we need to Scooby-Doo this crap and Zendaya kind of talks back to him in which he says, please Scooby-Doo this crap. Now here is possibly the biggest and most important part of this trailer. We find out why the villains are attacking Spider-Man. We hear Doc Ock say, you're flying out into the darkness to fight ghosts, in which Peter replies, what do you mean? In which Doctor Strange explains, they all die, referring to the villains fighting Spider-Man. It's their fate. Now, obviously our Peter Parker, Tom Holland, has never met or fought any of these people, let alone killed them. So Doctor Strange apparently knows here, they've all died to other Peter Parkers, specifically Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Doc Ock in the Tobey Maguire Sam Raimi universe died to Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker, kind of at least, in Spider-Man 2. Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin definitely died at the hands of Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker in the very first Spider-Man film. And then of course you have Jamie Foxx's Electro and the Lizard dying at the hands of Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker. The only one that's kind of interesting is Sandman. He didn't actually die in Spider-Man 3 to Tobey Maguire. He actually left on really good terms. Tobey Maguire said, I forgive you, and then he went away. And for this exact reason, it leads me to believe that perhaps this Sandman may not be from the Tobey Maguire Sam Raimi universe, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Now, as Doctor Strange explains this, we do see some footage of Peter fighting some villains and simply some villains causing chaos. And what I believe is the point where they all enter this universe. We can see Sandman and Electro are definitely there because we can see the sand on the left side, the lightning on the right side, and some purple in the background, which is what I believe is the entry point to where they came to this universe. Because at the end of the trailer, we see all of that purple and Doctor Strange says they're coming in. Now, the NYPD arrive at the scene along with with JJJ, J. Jonah Jameson on the scene, we can see the Daily Bugle on the van. We then see Peter jumping after a pumpkin bomb, obviously trying to save somebody that it's being thrown at. And what's interesting here is that he's actually not wearing a helmet. He's not wearing the face covering with a nanotech suit. This is most likely what results in the scene that we saw where he's really, really beat up. And the bomb is probably thrown at MJ or Ned. I'm gonna assume it's MJ, maybe one of the other Spider-Man but probably MJ. But here's where it gets really good. Doctor Strange says, I'm sorry, kid. And Peter says, yeah, me too. In which Doctor Strange looks at him and says, don't. But then Peter Parker webs up this cube that Doctor Strange is holding and takes it. Now, I've done a few videos talking about a real plot leak that is out there that I've seen that has been confirmed true. If you've been following me, you've seen this and you've heard about this cube. Don't worry if you haven't, I'll explain it right now. This cube is apparently a key, not only to the prison that all of the villains are in, but a key to sending them back to their respective universes and making sure nobody else comes into our universe, the MCU, 
from other universes like the villains already have done. Now, according to this plot leak, the cube eventually breaks, and that's why Doctor Strange at the end says, I can't stop him. But Peter takes this cube because he feels guilty that these villains died at the hand of another Spider-Man. He feels a ton of guilt because of this and thinks that maybe he can perhaps change it somehow and they don't have to die. Also, while the villains are apparently in their cells, the Green Goblin, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, tries to talk to him and kind of convinces him that they're actually good and they just want another chance. And this is why, combined with the guilt, Peter Parker takes the cube from Doctor Strange. However, if you're gonna try and take something from the master of the mystic arts, Doctor Strange, you better be ready to fight because that's exactly what happens when Peter takes the cube. They fight and Doctor Strange clearly wins here, but then Peter says, don't, there has to be another way. In which Strange says, there isn't. They're a danger to our universe. Now from here, we get a lot of really cool scenes. Now at 156 in the trailer, if you look really quickly, there's a scene of Aunt May running really frantically. This could actually be the scene where Green Goblin has thrown one of his pumpkin bombs. He could have thrown it at Aunt May. Looking back at that scene, this very well could be the case. After all, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin did use Aunt May as bait in the very first Spider-Man film as well. Looks like Norman Osborn could be doing that again because of course he knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. We then have the scene where Doc Ock has Peter wrapped up in his arms. We were showed this photo a couple of weeks ago, on the bridge of course, but here's a very, very cool scene. Scene. We can see Doc Ock actually taking the nanobots from the iron spider suit. A couple of weeks ago, we did get a photo released where Doc Ock had the red on his tentacles, and I told you it was from the iron spider suit, but some people doubted me. Greg from The Real Rejects. But that was what I was told, and now this definitely confirms it, as we can literally see the nanobots on his tentacles. We then see something insanely cool. Jamie Foxx's Electro is back. He looks completely different, which I love. Love, and he actually looks comic accurate. If you take a look, it's very brief. We can see the lightning forming around his head in that star pattern that looks exactly like a comic Electro looks like. I love that they're doing that. This is our first Jamie Foxx reveal, even though he spoiled it like a year and a half ago. But he says, you're not going to take this away from me. Most likely referring to the fact that he is now alive and has a second chance because he dies in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Obviously, him and the other villains are aren't just going to let Doctor Strange send them back to where they will just die again because that's exactly what will happen. So they're not going out without a fight. But here at 202 in the trailer, we actually see something rather interesting. We see a lightning bolt kind of hit Doc Ock and Doc Ock falls. Now again, at the end of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, Doc Ock kind of turns good and he sacrifices himself to save everybody from himself, but still he does it. He finds out Peter Parker is Spider-Man and he has a change of heart and says, I will not go down, I will not die a monster and seemingly turns good. Perhaps that is something that we could see happen again in this film. Maybe Doc Ock turns good and this is Electro fighting against him. Maybe not, maybe this is some sort of a mishap, but it does look like Electro hits Doc Ock pretty hard. We then see Peter on top of the Statue of Liberty that is being reconstructed to have Captain America's shield on it. He's fighting Electro and he jumps off and notice in his hand he still has that cube. The cube apparently gets damaged during the fight of Strange and Peter, but it looks like it could go on to get repaired somewhat because it looks like that's what they're going to use in the final battle to try and get them all to go back to their respective universes. We then hear very clearly Willem Dafoe's voice, the Green Goblin saying, Peter, you're struggling to have everything you want while the world tries to make you choose. Now, what I believe this is, is the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, in a prison cell in Doctor Strange's sanctum. And this is where I believe Norman Osborn is trying to talk to Peter and try and talk some sense into him. And this is where he kind of convinces Peter to let all of them go and makes him feel bad that they all died to Spider-Man. Now, honestly, I'm really worried about Happy. I think he might actually die in this movie, but we'll have to wait and see on that. But then comes the big edited money shot. There's some type of an explosion on top of the constructed Statue of Liberty. As far as what that is, we're not sure. Perhaps the villains are indeed trying to bring more villains into this universe so they can take it over. I doubt they're trying to get back because as we know, they'll die. But check this out. 
Peter says, this is all my fault. I can't save everybody, in which I've already explained that I think this is where the other Spider-Man come. I believe they come in via a sling ring, but that's all I'll say about that to avoid major spoilers. But in the main trailer that Sony released on their main YouTube page and on their Twitter, we see Spider-Man going up against Sandman, Electro, and the Lizard. Now the clip that I showed you in the beginning where the Lizard is getting hit in the face out of nowhere, that is actually only in the Brazilian trailer. In this trailer right here, we don't see the Lizard getting hit at all. So that's a slip up by Sony right there. But there is something very interesting about this scene. As you can see, Electro and the Lizard aren't going anywhere near Spider-Man. Electro is jumping up, the Lizard is jumping down and to the side of Peter Parker, and it seems very clear that there are other Spider-Men, too specifically, in this shot that have been edited out to not be revealed in this trailer. This scene right here just seems very evident. The Lizard isn't going anywhere near Spider-Man. That combined with the Brazilian trailer showing the Lizard getting hit by a ghost, essentially, that confirms it right there. The other Spider-Men are in this film. So the three of of them fight Electro, Sandman, and the Lizard, and the shield that is being built on the Statue of Liberty ends up breaking and the building ends up collapsing in which MJ starts to fall. And here is what I think is actually happening here. This fall looks a lot like when Gwen Stacy died in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Looks a lot like it. We then see Tom Holland's Peter Parker jump after her and it looks like he's going to end up catching her. However, I don't think it's Tom Holland's Peter Parker that saves her. I think it's Andrew's. I think this is his big redemption moment right here. I think he couldn't save his Gwen in his universe, but he can save MJ in this universe. And if this doesn't happen, I think it's a really big missed opportunity. But after watching this trailer, I have full confidence in Marvel and Sony that they know what they're doing. The trailer ends with Strange saying that they're coming through and I can't stop them. This really could be anything, but right now I'm thinking that it's just more villains or other universes colliding with their own, which would make a lot of sense considering that we're about to go into the multiverse of madness. I think other universes are colliding here and and that's where everything's going to pick up in Multiverse of Madness and is going to make for a heck of an ending. And hopefully this also means that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield could be sticking around for a while. But that was the official full trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. I loved every single second of it. Please let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for supporting me and my channel through this time. It's been amazing. All the Spider-Man news has been fantastic. I hope you continue to support us even when it's gone, even though it will be sad. And of course, you can follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I post there sometimes. It means a lot when you follow me. You can find me on there. Thanks again for the support. And as always, I love you all. Woof woof.